Hi everyone, uh, welcome to Enrolling in Timetabling for the Science Faculty. Uh, my name is Alexa, I'm a student advisor. Uh, we also have a member from the Science Faculty here who can answer some of those specific questions. If our, uh, our member of the Science Faculty, would you mind saying hi? Hi, this is Phoebe from um, the Faculty of Science Student Inquiries Office. Awesome, thank you so much. Uh, if you do have questions about the content, uh, I, we ask that you put it in the question in A, and we will uh, answer some of those questions out loud uh, at the end. Uh, just also be aware that if you have very specific questions to your situation, we possibly won't be able to uh, answer them in this uh, situation. Uh, and we recommend you would talk to a, maybe an academic advisor at faculty, but we'll have uh, some information on that a bit later. Okay, so welcome to Enrolling in Timetabling. So first, we're going to start off with the acknowledgement of country. So the University of Queensland UQ acknowledges the traditional owners and their custodianship of the lands on which we meet. We pay our respect to their ancestors and their descendants who continue cultural and spiritual connections to country. We recognise their valuable contributions to Australian and global society. Okay, so the first section of this presentation will be about some key information. So we'll look at some of the enrolment dates. Uh, we'll understand the difference between faculty and school. We'll look at the different modes of study and we'll talk about understand your electronic course profile or ECP. So to start off, we're going to look at some important enrolment dates. Now, some of you might already be enrolled in your courses and you're mainly here for timetabling or, or some of you might not even know where to start. Okay, so timetabling will open next Monday, the 19th, and you've got until the 3rd of July to put in your preferences on my table, my timetable. Okay. On the 14th of July, that it will be the last date that you can make a program change in my sign it. That's also the due date for domestic students to enroll. So if you're a domestic student, please make sure all your courses are enrolled in and you've done your timetable. Uh, the 17th to the 21st of July is orientation week or O week, as Australians like to say. Uh, there'll be so many great uh, fun things on campus. There'll be other presentations that'll be useful for you to go to. Uh, there'll be events. Uh, there will also be some science faculty specific things that you definitely should be going to that will give you some additional great information. The 21st of July is also the international students due date to enroll. Okay, and then on the 24th of July, 24th of July, classes will commence. So that's week one. And then the 4th of August is the last date for addition of courses or alteration of enrollment. And it's a due date for payment of fees and charges. Okay, and then census date is the 31st of August. Now, this is the last date to drop courses or cancel enrollment without financial penalty. If you drop after that date, you will have to still pay for the course. So. Here at UQ, we've got faculties and schools. And what is the difference? Now, there is six faculties here at uh, UQ currently. So we've got the Business, Economics and Law Faculty, Engineering, Architecture, Information Technology, uh, Health and Behavioural Sciences, hu Humanities and Social Sciences, uh, Medicine and Science. So they are an overarching uh, organisation. And then within the faculties, there's different schools and and other things uh, in institutes. So we can see in our list of schools there, some of them it's very obvious which faculties they might be in. So clearly pharmacy, that's probably that's health and behavioral sciences. Uh, chemical engineering, that's very clearly uh, engineering, architecture and IT uh, faculty. So you might be in one school, but depending on what courses you're doing, they, they might be some in other schools. Uh, but we can talk a bit more about who you would go to for each a bit later. So we'll look at some key terminology that we use here at UQ. Now, some of this terminology you might already be aware of. Some of it is uh, might be specific to UQ. If you're an international student, uh, you might come to Australia and find that we use lots of words that you're not quite used to and are very unique to Australia. And then UQ sometimes takes it a step further and we have our own special language as well. It's okay, you will get used to it. So the first thing is the enrollment. So this is when you enroll in your courses for the semester. And then we've got timetabling. So this is when you select your preferences uh, for the class times for each of your courses. So those these two things is mainly what this presentation is about today. 
Now you've got your program. Now, if you've uh, studied at a different university overseas or even in Australia, you, they might call that a degree. But in Australia, we use the term program, okay? And then we use the term course, which your program is made up of courses. Or you might have uh, previously heard of them as subjects. So you will pick all your, your different courses that will make up your program, okay? Now, the courses themselves, they have a value. So the value of each of your courses is what we call a unit, okay? So most courses will be uh, two units, okay? But if you might be have a placement uh, course, and that might be eight units, and so that would be the one, co one course that you do for the whole of that semester, okay? Hopefully, you're all still with me. Okay, and then we've got our course coordinator. Uh, you might know them as the lecturer. So each course is designed and planned by a course coordinator and they're able and they will often be the main lecturer for your course. You can find their contact details on your ECP, which we're going to talk to talk about. Now, so your electronic course profile or ECP. So each course has an ECP which contains important information about that course. It's really important that you always read your ECP. OK, because if you if you need to know when your exams are, uh, when uh, when assessments are due, what you're doing week to week, what books you're supposed to uh, be reading, your ECP will have all this really great information in it. OK, then you've got compulsory and elective courses. So compulsory courses are the mandatory ones that you need to complete uh, to do to complete your program. And electives are courses that you might have some uh, some choice in which ones you do. The ones, the elective courses that you do do might also be reliant on what your major or minor is. So a major combines courses in a program focusing on a specific discipline. Minors are very similar, but they require less courses. Okay. Then we've got a lecture. This, I think, is probably a term that most of you should uh, be aware of. So a lecture is a presentation delivered by an academic. This is where you'll be taught the theory of your course. So that will most likely be your course coordinator who will be teaching you in your lecture. Then you will have tutorials or tutes because Australians like to shorten everything, uh, are held in a smaller classroom and involve more interaction between the students and the teacher and the tutor. Uh, so it might be your course coordinator. It might be someone else. You might also have uh, workshops and labs and there's other options for different courses, uh, but the lectures and the tutorials were the main type of learning that you will do. So the number of hours per week uh, is called your contact hours. So this is the teaching activities for the course. So this is all the lectures, tutorials and workshops. This information can be found on your ECP. So this is an important note for international students, okay? So the full-time study load is eight units generally, which is four courses. Once again, if you're on maybe a placement or, or a course with a high unit load, then you will do, do less, but eight units per semester, okay? And international students with a student visa will have to complete their program by the end date of their COE, so their confirmation of enrollment, okay? If you want to reduce the amount of courses you undertake this semester, do not just uh, unenroll or reduce courses. Uh, you really need to talk to someone. So please come and talk to student services, so maybe a student advisor like myself, and also your faculty. Because uh, if you just decide to under-enroll without talking to someone, you risk uh, complications with your visa. So... Here at, at UQ, we have a seven-point numerical grade structure. Okay, so we can see that a seven there is a high distinction, a six is a distinction, a five is a credit, and a four is a pass. Okay, so to pass a course, the minimum you need to get is a four. If you get a three, which is technically a fail, uh, you might be able to get a supplementary assessment, which would is an additional piece of assessment, which would then, if you pass it, uh, grant you a four, which is a pass. Okay, if you get a two or a one, you cannot get supplementary assessment. And it's also good to note there that we do not mark on a curve. Okay, so you are achieving against yourself, not against your classmates. So course attendance mode. 
So courses in your program may be available in more than one delivery mode, depending on the program and course requirements. Now, the vast majority of your courses will be in person, but there still is some external courses that might be available. So in person, you're required to engage in in-person learning or assessment at a UQ campus or other location at some point, okay? But an in-person course will still have, will still have uh, aspects of online delivery. So there you might be able to access online lectures, options for online tutorials. You might have some online assessments, uh, things like that. But there still is uh, the expectation that you engage in person, okay? If you do have any options for external, these are delivered entirely online and the student must participate online for all learning and assessment, okay? So always make sure you check your ECP for, for information, okay? ECPs will have information on your attendance modes. So the ECP that I have mentioned how many times already? Let's look into what actually is involved, okay? So your electronic course profile contains information on courses, including the course objectives and aims, some of the learning resources required. So if it's textbooks, if it's specific software, uh, those kinds of things, uh, course learning and teaching activities. So it should have a breakdown week to week what you will be doing, as well as your assessment tasks, okay? Now there's multiple ways of finding your ECP, uh, but if you're already rolling the course, the easiest way would be be to go uh, via MySignIt. So you log into MySignIt. This is also where you'll do your enrolling. And this can be accessed via your my.uq dashboard, okay? You select the enrollments tile. You click on the blue information icon beside the course code. And then you have your ECP. Please note that some of the ECPs might not be available until the first week of classes. So other ways you can access your ECP is you can uh, search your course in the programs and courses website that that is shown on the screen. You can also just Google it. Uh, but if you are Googling it, make sure you're getting the correct year and semester. So what does an ECP look like? So this is just uh, straight the first page uh, and we can go through that. So we can already see on this first page, we've got all the, a lot of the information that we've already talked about. So we can see the mode is in person. We can see the number of units is two. We can see the con contact hours per week. We can also see all the different, uh, different breakdown of what's in the ECP. So aims and objectives, the resources, the activities, the assessment, the policies and guidelines. So even just on that front page, we're already getting so much information. Then we can see that we've got our learning resources. So this course, uh, doesn't have any required resources, but it does have a number of rec uh, recommended ones for the students to read. Then we've got our, our learning activity. So teaching and learning activities. So we can see what is uh, expected, what we're expected to do each week. Uh, so that also helps us plan so that we, uh, if there is specific uh, resources that we need to be reading before them, we can kind of, we can know what we will be doing and then we've also got our assessment so we can see for this one we've got an exam a mid-semester exam it looks like and a report okay and we can see the waiting and we can see a due date okay so even in just those two pages we can see all this really great information that can help us plan our semester and know what we are expected to do uh, you'll also have the policies in your ECP so that will be things like uh, extensions and supplementary uh, and attendance requirements. So make sure you are reading those kinds of things as well, because they can differ to course to course. Okay, so that's an ECP. So in this next section, we're going to talk about enrolling. So we've already talked about my sign it. Uh, we'll talk about enrolling in your courses, and we will also talk about where to go for course advice and help. So first, we need to access my sign it to enroll. Okay, so you can just straight up access it via that website. Uh, you can follow the link on your UQ dashboard. Uh, if you're not sure how to find your dashboard, I find the easiest uh, for me to find it is to scroll to the bottom of it, just about any UQ page and there will be a link there uh, under current students and you can easily get to this dashboard where you can uh, then step off into a range of different supports and, and platforms here at UQ. So looking at that little info uh, screen cap there, we can see my sign is there and we're going to click on it. 
So this is kind of what your MySignet will look at look like. So you can use this to enroll in your courses via that enrollments tile in the middle. Uh, update your personal details, the one on the left. Now, if you are an international student or a domestic student who is moving to Brisbane to study at UQ, as soon as you have moved, please, please, please go on to MySignet and update your personal details. If you get an Australian number, please update it. If you get a new address, please update it. Okay. It's really important for you to have your personal details uh, updated in here. And I think as an international student, it is part of your visa requirement as well. Okay. You can also use here to pay your fees. So this student owes $50. Uh, you can view your final grades. Uh, you can request a change of program. You can also uh, get a program summary. You can defer your exams, and you can also apply for a supplementary exam through MySignet. Okay, so we've logged onto MySignet. Uh, we need to do our enrollment. So let's click on the enrollments tile. It'll take you to this page. So it will have there what your program is, and then we go, there's no enrollments exist. So we're going to click add a course. Then we search for a course. If you know what course you want to enroll in, then you can put in the course code. If maybe it's not a compulsory course, but an elective course, and you know you kind of know the type of course that you would want to do, uh, but you're not quite sure exactly which one, then you can search via subject area, okay? Once we found the course that we want to enroll in, we click uh, enroll. And that is how we enroll. That's the easy part. Okay, so some of you will probably be given the list of the courses that you will need to enroll in. Some of you might have a bit more flexibility in that. And if you're not quite sure what courses that you should be taking, uh, then you can talk to an academic advisor, okay? So an academic advisor is at the faculty or the school and they can help you with course and program selections and questions. Uh, can my learned colleague at the faculty tell me if the academic advisors are at a faculty level or at a school level? Um, so for the Faculty of Science, actually all our academic advisors are academics in their area. And general, generally, actually, we don't really provide academic advising for um, like first year students if you are in like say um, Bachelor of Science program. Um, so generally we'll refer students to the science study planners. There's very detailed um, instructions on what courses are recommended for you to study. And if you have any um, questions, you're welcome to contact the um, Faculty of Science Student Inquiries Office. And we can give you further advice. And if um, there's some questions we can't answer, then we can arrange an academic advising meeting. Awesome. That is why I always ask the faculty because it's different <laughs> in every faculty. I know, it must be confusing. <laughs> well, I do know engineering, architecture and IT, it's at the school level. I know that HAS and HABS, it's at the faculty level. Uh, yes, I always like to double check. Yes, Thank you so no much. Problem. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to look at timetabling. Now, this one's a bit more complicated than just enrolling. So we'll look at the class allocation process. We'll look once again at those important dates. So it will, some of them will be the ones that we talked about at the beginning. We'll talk about how do you choose your classes and what does this look like? We've got some great video guides on that. Uh, we've got a class preferencing guide as well and how to make changes to your timetable. And then once again, uh, if you do need help, uh, where to go. So. At other institutions, it might be that you have to, it's a first uh, come, first served. That's not what it's like at UQ. So we have a preferencing period. So on the 19th of June, the preferences will open. You then go on, uh, make your selections before the 3rd of July, okay? Once it shuts on the 3rd of July, it'll be unavailable for a few days. And then it will open again. It, you'll have a timetable there, but you can... Uh, make swaps and adjustments uh, if if there is vacancies in other courses, if say your situation has, has changed or you do want to make any of those changes, okay? For that section, it really helps to get in first because if you get waitlisted for another course, obviously the earlier you uh, put in that, add that yourself to that waitlist, then the greater chance that you have 
of if spaces open up, uh, getting that course. Now, once again, that would require someone already in the course to move. So it's not necessarily because you're on the wait list does not necessarily mean that you are going to get into that course. Okay. And that adjustment period closes at 9am on the 7th of August. Okay. So choosing class times. And we are going to watch a video which will explain it a lot better than I will. Uh, so now that you've enrolled in your courses, you need to select your preferred class times. Your classes will be allocated based on the preferences you select. This step is called class preferencing. To select your preferred class times, you'll need to register your pre preferred times through my timetable, our class allocation system. And we can see there that there is a link off from my timetable off the dashboard. So we can see we can click on my sign at there and but also my timetable there, okay? Now, before we watch uh, the video, there is uh, another, there's a planner feature in my timetable that if you are really confused about uh, planning your timetable, uh, you can use the planner, which will help you make, it'll make it a bit easier for you if you are really stuck and a bit confused. But we'll uh, watch a video first about how to put in your preferences. This video will help you preference your classes using My Timetable. Through the My UQ portal, you can access the My Timetable application on the left-hand side toolbar. On the left of screen, you can view the courses in which you are enrolled. Any class marked with a red symbol requires your attention. When you are notified with a yellow symbol, your preferences for this class are pending. When you are notified with a green symbol, this class has been allocated and requires no further attention. Select a class to enter your preferences. View all available class times displayed in either list or timetable format by switching between the views on the top right-hand corner. Next to the preference drop-down menu, a percentage will indicate the popularity of the class. To preference a class, you can use a drop-down menu to nominate your preference. Where there are four or more options, you will be required to select a minimum of four preferences. Where there are a large number of options, you can choose a maximum of ten preferences. Then select Save. Here, you will be successfully notified of your progress. Now that we have input our preferences into each class, Yellow symbols indicate our preferences are saved and pending allocation. When the class preferencing window has closed, my timetable will be unavailable for a few days. During this time, the system will create your personalised timetable based on your preferences. Okay, so that stage needs to be done before the 3rd of July, okay? So it'll open on Monday, then you've got to the 3rd of July to do that, okay? Once that has happened, it will shut. And then you will, on the 10th of July, you will then be able to make adjustments, okay? So this is where you can review the allocated timetable. You can swap class times if there's space available. Like I said previously, uh, if you wait list, if you want to join the wait list, make sure you do it as soon as possible. Why it's really important to go on as soon as you can on the 10th of July. You've got a better chance of sw swapping if any spaces become available. Uh, and you can allocate yourself to classes you've missed during the class preferencing stage. So if you had some last minute changes to your enrollment, so you withdrew from something and uh, enrolled in something else, uh, you can then add yourself to those classes as well, okay? You now have your personalised timetable that can be accessed through the MyUQ portal via the timetable application on the left-hand side toolbar. If your situation changes and your timetable no longer suits, you can make changes during the class adjustment stage. On the left of the screen, you can view the courses in which you are enrolled. 
If there is a green symbol, your classes have been allocated. After the allocation process is complete and where places are available, you are able to change your allocation by clicking the Select button next to your preferred class. If a class is full, you can request a swap by clicking the heart icon. You will then become waitlisted and allocated if a place becomes available. If you change your mind, you can deselect the swap request by clicking the heart icon. If you see a clash, you will not be able to allocate to this class. You now. Okay, so if you would like to watch those videos again, uh, as well as one on how to use the timetable planner, you can find them uh, by just searching enrollment and allocation. Uh, and you can watch all those videos again if you're still confused, uh, which I would understand if you uh, are. I've uh, completed this presentation four times and I'm still not sure if I would be able to do it first time. Okay, so. If there are no suitable classes available or you, if you need further help, please contact uh, the relevant faculty or school for advice, okay? So they're the coordinating unit in your school, in your course profile. So we have here also, we've got science.mytimetable at uq.edu.au as well. Uh, if you do have questions about your timetable and if you need support. Okay. We might just take a, a pause here. And now if you wouldn't mind just completing this really quick survey, we always like to uh, get feedback on the presentations that we do so that we, we can always be improving and making sure that the information that we are providing is up to date and relevant. Okay, so we've just got a few other things that uh, we think it's important for students to know. So we'll talk about the academic integrity model modules and the special course English for academic communication. So you need to make sure you complete the academic integrity models before the due dates. Okay, so these models are designed to help you understand your obligations and responsibilities as a UQ student. So academic integrity describes the ethical principles that underpin academia and student life. So it's very important that you go on and do these modules, okay? So you need to do part A by the 31st of August and part B by the 27th of October, okay? Now you can access these modules uh, on edX Edge platform and you just click enroll now to get started, okay? The modules are intended to be completed once. If you are having trouble uh, accessing these modules, th then the library can help you. So the UQ Library Ask Us, uh, they have a desk in the library, but they also, if you just go on the library website, uh, they've got an online platform where you can answer, ask questions. Okay, so we also have a course, English for Academic Communication. So if you are, if this is the first time you are studying in uh, English, I would highly recommend you look into the uh, English for an acad for academic communication uh, classes. So they're run by UQ College. Uh, they're free. They're interactive workshops, and they give you opportunities to practice language and get feedback and communicate clearly in academic context. Okay, so if you are worried about uh, studying and uh, an academic life in English, then I would definitely say uh, go on register for these courses. Okay, so now we will uh, move to the question section of the presentation. I can see that uh, five people have already put any some questions in. If you do have any additional questions uh, that come up, please put them in the Q&A and I will try and answer them. Phoebe will try and answer them if I can't. Uh, 
but also be aware that if you're asking very specific questions about your courses or your timetable, uh, we might not be able to answer them. Okay. So someone's asking, how's the enrollment process different for when you have credit for 16 units? That um, might, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, i um, happy to answer that question. Um, so I guess the student is referring to international students that are um, starting um, with credits from their prior study and you probably have 16 units on your offer letter. I mean, every student might have um, different units um, of credit, could be eight units, 16, for example. Um, if you're one of those students, um, you will receive a letter from us um, showing you what credits you receive and a recommended study plan. Um, so you will know like what courses you should enroll in in um, each semester. Um, so we are in the process of um, preparing those letters. So if you haven't received it, don't worry, you'll receive it in the next um, probably like two weeks. Um, so I would say like, just keep in mind, this is only for international students that um, receive credits and is showing on the offer letters. Um, for other students, um, if you don't have any credits, I would say refer to our science study planners um, to figure out what courses you should study um, in semester two, 2023. Thank you. Okay. So uh, Melissa has a question uh, about her timetable uh she has an overlap from what i know in the videos that we've just watched uh if you've got a clash it won't let you timetable i would suggest emailing uh once again when the timetabling opens uh go on make your timetable but that timetable uh specific email would be where to contact uh for those specific questions that you do have okay Yes, um, just one more thing to add. Um, just I understand um, Melissa is in the Master of Environmental Management program, and I would really recommend um, Melissa to refer to the science study planners first because um, in the recommended timetable, uh, I mean, sorry, um, recommended study plan, um, we have listed what course students um, like are recommended to enroll in each semester and probably like those courses shouldn't clash. Um, and you are like probably recommended to prioritize those compulsory courses first. And that's why it's important to look at the study planners. Excellent. So already we've answered two questions and I'm <laughs> getting that we need to look at those study planners. Uh, how is the best way for students to access those study planners? Um, so the website is um, planner.science.uq.edu.au. Excellent. I do think there may be a lot of the questions that students do have on uh, this presentation might be answered by uh, going there. So if you haven't, highly recommend you go to that website and check your study planner. Okay, so the next one I think is also answered by reading the study planner. Uh, you study master's semester two is looking program to enroll for your courses. Most of you desired electives are only available for semester one. Uh, that's also something to be also be aware of. Not every course is offered every semester. So especially if you need to be doing prereqs for certain courses, it's really important to know which semesters each is because if you miss the prereq on a semester one and it's not offered again until the next semester one, uh, then you won't be able to do that one that's a prereq for until the year after. So it's really important that you do check those kinds of things. Yes, um, um, yeah. Um, one more thing to like remind students just that, um, so for example, if you're in the Bachelor of Science program, um, just prioritize your um, compulsory core courses and courses in your majors first um, before looking into um, the electives. Excellent, okay. So can students with no placement internship requirements still enroll in a placement course? Um, so that would depends on which program you're in and which placement course you're looking at. So um, for example, um, for students in the Bachelor of Science program, um, it is possible for students to enroll in a science industry placement course, that's um, SCI 3050. Um, so because in the Bachelor of Science program, there's room for students to take this course as an elective. Um, also, like students should look at whether that 
specific course um, has um, prerequisite or whether it's restricted. So for example, in site 3050, um, there has prerequisite of, um, they say she should have to have completed like 24 units to as the program with um, eight units of level two. Um, but then um, it is still possible for students to meet in the Bachelor of Science program. So I'm um, just using like this program and this course as an example. Um, it really depends on which program you're in and which um, specific placement course you're looking at. Excellent. Uh, so the slides, either the recording of this presentation will be up at some point. I don't know off the top of my head. Um, I am also trying to record a nice clean copy so that we don't have my stumblings all through it. Uh, I just don't know where it will be. Uh, but I'm sure you, we can find it when it is up. Uh, you can, though, after this, you can go and rewatch the videos in this recording about uh, how to use uh, my timetable. So making your selections and making adjustments. So if it's if you're still having confusion around that, I would definitely uh, look up those videos and rewatch them as well as the one on using the planner. Yeah, and um, I understand for um, those orientation for science, um, generally if you just search like science orientation recordings, um, you can reach them, like say in the future, if you're joining like those ones that are specific to your programs or the science international one, those are where then you can access them on the UQ website. Awesome. Okay, so we've got any tips on how to plan your timetable, example, having long breaks between classes. If you would just like to do that, then maybe use the planner in uh, my timetable. If there is a health or disability reason why you need specific timetable, uh, please book in uh, to see a student advisor. So uh, not an academic advisor at the faculty, but a student advisor. So I'm a student advisor and we talk to students about disability welfare settling in. Okay. So you can look up, just Google UQ student advisor. You can also uh, look up UQ student center. Okay. Uh, and then you can find our contacts off that. Okay. So if there is a disability or a health reason why you need a specific timetable, please book in an appointment with a student advisor. Okay. Otherwise I would say use the planner. Okay, so Nicole has a question that I don't think I can answer. So when will the timetable planner be out for those with credit exemptions? I assume um, it's still the same uh, yeah. dates. Or I think Nicole, Nicole might be asking about um, like international students um, with credits from their prior studies and um, like, or, like more about the um, like recommended study plan. I'm, I'm guessing this is what, it is about. Um, so I would uh, just a reminder: if you have um, like credits on your offer letter, and those um, letters that we send out on your credits and your recommended study plan should be sent to your student email address. So make sure you check that email because I understand that um, we have sent um, some of those letters out already. Excellent. Okay. So the next person says, will there be any issue with preferencing allocating confirm the timetable if you have pending tuition fee before the pay due date? So I'm pretty sure if I look at the dates that all the preferencing and allocating happens before you even, before the end, before you, the date of you actually have to pay and it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, because you don't, they're not actually asking you for money at that point anyway. <laughs> okay. So if I want to attend summer school for courses as well as courses this semester, do I enroll now or will there be a later enrollment time? Uh, you might be able to enroll now, but there will be, you can enroll later, but there will obviously be a cutoff date uh, for that. But I don't know how early before that you can actually enroll. Phoebe, do you know? Um, I can quickly have a look at the um, calendar. <laughs> it's a bit Yes. Long Thank ago. you. No problem. Um, uh, yes, can't do that uh, when I'm <laughs> running it, but yes. Yeah, I totally understand. Um, okay. So I do know for semester one and two, uh, lots of students will enroll in both semesters at the beginning of the year. Uh, yeah. 
So summer semester enrollment has opened. Um, if students would like to enroll for summer semester 2023 now, um, it's possible to do that. And um, due date to enroll, like to enroll in at least one course is the is in November. So you have plenty of time to do that before then. Awesome. Thank you. No problem. Okay, so I, Christine, I'm not quite sure I understand your question, but uh, do you mean some classes show the word delayed? What are, what does that mean? And what is the difference between a tutorial and a workshop? Uh, a tutorial, I mean, a workshop can be multiple things. A tutorial will be week to week, a smaller class. Uh, often our summer semesters and certain things, it rather than having, because it's only, it's a shortened one, it will be, uh, longer days of workshops and, and things like that. And often less people do summer semester. Um, I do think that there's probably a difference between faculties about what they use the word workshop for, uh, which is why it's always great to have faculty on these presentations uh, because I don't always understand. Yeah, um, that's so good. Uh, so um, I think like possible what like workshop you have to refer to the ECP of each um specific course um what it is about unfortunately probably can't give a general um answer um but for delayed I believe you're referring to delayed viewing um when you are selecting your timetables so that means those um lectures will be recorded and then you can watch them um at your own time okay awesome thank you uh, so here's another question for you, Phoebe. Shall we enroll <laughs> before we receive the credit exemption slash study, study plan letter? Um, okay, so that's another question from um, students with um, like international students, students with credits on their um, offer letter. Um, so I believe you should receive the letter before um, the due date to enroll. Um, so you should have plenty of time to do that. But if you would like to enroll in courses first and then change them after receiving the letter, you're welcome to do that as well. Um, so just a reminder on those um, key dates. Um, for your enrollment, just give me a second, because um, I understand sometimes she is uh, a bit concerned when they are going to receive the letter. Um, so the due date to enroll for international students, that means you need to have enrolled in at least one course. It's the 21st of July, so you still have plenty of time um, and you can still like make changes to your enrollment until the um, like the 4th of August. So don't worry, um, you should have plenty of time to enroll after receiving your letter. But if you would like to enroll now and just make changes later, you're welcome to do so. Awesome. Okay, uh, there is someone who's having uh, issues how to activate the UK student account. Now there is actually a good guide on our website which will step you through each different step of that. I don't know the... Uh, link off the top of my head but if you just google at UQ getting started uh there is a very excellent guide that will talk to you about activating your student account accessing your email a range of things okay if you are also having trouble after uh following that guide then I would say talk to the student center okay you can just google UQ student center uh, and talk to them about how to do that okay Okay, so you, uh, so Domi's got a question about when classes start. So yes, so the first uh, day of first day of week one is July twenty fourth, and that's where most people will start. There is, however, programs that start early. So uh, while it's a different faculty, I do know that uh, medicine, the doctor of medicine, uh, starts early. I do know that uh, the vet. Uh, Bachelor of Veterinary Science, I think, also starts early. Uh, so really double check your ECPs. Uh, that's what my answer would be for that question. Uh, and I would be going with what your ECP and what is uh, communicated to you via the course coordinator. There is some exceptions, exceptions to the July 24th. 
Yeah, another um, common one in the Faculty of Science is the Master of Conservation Science and the Master of Con um, Conservation Biology program. Um, so those programs start in um, teaching period five. Um, so yeah, like what Alexa said, um, refer to your ECPs and um, your science study planners for more details. Awesome. Okay. Okay, so the next one about uh, Master of Biotechnology at UQ, I think you do would need to contact the faculty. Uh, you're asking a very specific question and I'm not sure. Um, yeah, um, if um, students um, are already in the program and you still want to request for credit, it is possible. Um, just You can um, probably search like UQ credit request. There's a lot of details on how to submit a request for credits. Thank you. I'm learning so much, BB. <laughs> okay, so the next person, uh, is there any attendance tracker or something related to managing attendance? So if you are, look, you are still into, expected to attend classes if you are in person. Some courses will have uh, the requirement of attendance or participation. Uh, but that will be in your ECP. So it's uh, it will be under the assessment section. It will show that you, if you're being assessed on it. And obviously for those, yes, they will be managing your, att your attendance. Uh, I don't know if overall they are tracking that, but highly recommend you attend all your learning activities, please. Okay. Uh, we've got another question about the, once again, I can't answer. So the, the offer letter writing, the credits needed for international students, is this the one they received earlier? So yes, I, I think you might've received it or without yeah. you actually showing us what the letter is. It's a bit hard for us to say if that's the letter. Yeah, usually it's at the bottom um, of, of your offer letter and um, in the, in um, the body, it should show you like how many units of credits you have received. But then later, um, we will send a, like, a letter to each um, international students that have received credits for their prior studies on like what the specific credits are and what are the remaining courses you have to complete to meet your program requirements. Um, I know we've probably talked a lot about um, like international <laughs> students with credits, so I hope we're not um, confusing it, like other people. That's okay. Okay, so the next person, uh, uh, is there a workshop walkthrough on how to use the study planner? I believe this is our stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah. Bob, I, um, <laughs> yes. Is is Bob possibly prompting you to to mention things? Is this what's going on? <laughs> I believe so. so um, <laughs> Bob, do you have more information for us? <laughs> Faculty of Science oh, will okay. have great things on O Week as well, so make sure you are going to the uh, O Week presentations as well and events as well. Yeah, um, I would say like for um each program, there are a like, specific um orientation sessions. Um, so make sure um you probably just like go on the orientation page on the UQ website, and a lot of information um on when um each orientation is. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Barb. Okay, so the next one's where do you find the prerequisites that would be, uh, I'm going to assume, the ECPs. Okay? Yes, definitely. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's to me, that's that's kind of where I'm pretty sure I've, I've seen it. So uh, it will tell you if you need to have already completed certain courses before you can enroll in that one. But if you are doing all first year bachelor courses, then there probably isn't a whole lot of prereqs. But obviously, the higher you go, then uh, the more prereqs. Yeah. So when you um, open the ECP, um, look on the left hand side, usually it's very clear on what the prerequisites are. Awesome. So, how many courses are you supposed to take in a semester for masters? Uh, full course load is eight units uh so it would be if it's if they're all two two units each it would be four courses 
yeah, unless you're in um, probably Master of Conservation Science or Conservation Biology, then in that case, um, it's more intensive. Um, you are recommended to look at your um, program and courses page and the study planners. Excellent. Okay, uh, so Danielle wants to know, I want to enroll in music psych as an elective, but found it's only offered in semester one. Any reasons for that? Uh, I think generally if things are only offered one semester, it's because uh, the number of students within that course is not enough to offer it both semesters. That's generally what I would, would think. Uh, it might also be because of prerequisites as well. Uh, but it's they kind of need a certain class size to be able to offer it. And if you're only getting a few each semester, then that's why they would only offer it one semester. Yeah, and I'm guessing this student probably is in the Bachelor of Science and hoping to do a UQ minor in um, music psychology. So um, I would say probably just focus on your um, core courses, like Psy 1000, Set 1201. Um, first in your like first semester or like some um, prerequisite courses for your major and it's possible for you to plan out um, and do those um, UQ minor courses um, in, in the future. Awesome. Okay, the next person asked when the, uh, when do international science students need to enroll by, I assume it's still the 21st of July. So that's the due date for international students. Now I would be, uh, now that you've been to our amazing presentation, I would be going on and enrolling now because uh, then it's done, really. Yeah, so um, the due date to enroll is to, um, that is a requirement that you have to enroll in at least one course, um, but then um, you can still add courses or make changes um until the 4th of august but just bear in mind that our semester two starts on the 24th so like what alexa said better to enroll earlier yes and enrolling now is also important if you do want very specific times in your timetable as well because if you enroll later and you aren't able to make those selections during the uh timetabling period then you will be more limited in what you can, what times are available to you. Okay, so Danielle's got another question. Uh, so when choosing an elective, what's the difference between what level one compulsory course and level one elective course, which do you choose? Uh, once again, I'm going to go back to Phoebe's brilliant yeah. advice is uh, compulsory course. Uh, please do prioritize the compulsory courses. So uh, I actually, it's probably Phoebe can probably explain it better than me. Yeah, so um, when you say compulsory course, um, I'm like I believe then that it's not an elective. Um, so maybe refer to your um, course list to look at which courses are compulsory. Um, so if you're say in in the Bachelor of Science program, um, there are compulsory course like core courses that all students have to complete, and then there are compulsory courses in the major that you choose. Um, and then there are electives that you can select. So probably just um, go to the course list again and look at um, which courses are compulsory. Um, if you have questions about your um, like chosen major um, or you're just like confused about the course list, um, you can contact um, the Faculty of Science and Inquiries office and we can um, answer your specific questions. Awesome. Okay, the next one I think is for you again. So if I have course exemptions, example, I only have two years to complete my bachelor's. Can I take a prereq course in the same semester as the course that requires it? Um, so generally um, you're supposed to have completed a prerequisite course um, that is listed on the course profile. Um, but looks like um, your questions is a bit more complicated. So you can um, probably send an email to the Faculty of Science so we can look into what exemptions you have and what courses you plan to enroll. And just a reminder, please send an email from your UQ student email address um, because of privacy reasons. Yes, that is a big important thing. Please always communicate with UQ staff uh, with, through your UQ email address. Okay, uh, Nicole wants to know if it's possible to take electives from any other faculties uh, 
are there limitations? Uh, can you take something totally unrelated to my program? I will refer to Phoebe, but I would also say it would really depend on what your program is as well. Yes, definitely. Um, so you have to check your program requirements. Um, so for example, um, in the Bachelor of Science program, um, students can take up to 16 units of general electives that can be from any undergraduate program at UQ. So if students would like to study, say, some economics courses or language courses, you can do that. But I remember this student actually asked us about um, like credits for international students before, so it might be different for your case. Um, so um, I would say like if you have credit, um, refer to your letter. Um, they sent from the Faculty of Science, or or you can just email us um, if like your situation is a little bit more complicated. Okay, next person just wants to reconfirm that should she enroll until uh, she receives her study plan with credit details. Um, uh, yeah, I think we probably answer. Um, a similar question earlier. Mm -hmm. um, if you um, like know what courses you need to study, you can enroll now and um, definitely you'll receive um, the credit letter um, before the due dates to enroll. So you can make changes to um, your enrollments, but then like if you would like to wait, definitely that's no problem. Excellent, okay. So the website says orientation week for masters in conservation bio starts on June 29th. Uh, I think that's probably one of the specific courses, specific programs that does start earlier. Would you agree, Phoebe? Yes. So um, um, master of conservation biology um, starts before um SEM2, like the SEM2 commencement date. Um, but I don't know if you're asking about the, you're refer, are you referring to the like orientation? Um, because I understand the orientation for this program is on the 29th of June. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it's not necessarily a specific orientation week, uh, yeah. but it's the orientation a day. Uh, you can still yes. obviously partake in all the other orientation things in the orientation week as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Eloise, for confirming that uh, for summer courses, uh, she's able to enroll now. So she's uh, just tested it out for us. So we appreciate that. So... Uh, this student was, we have an in-person advisor to help choose or double check the course plan before semester starts or before orientation week. Um, so generally um, at university, students um, need to be responsible for their enrollment. So um, you have to enroll by yourself. Um, that's why we have um, created a lot of study planners um, that is um, specific to each program for students to refer to. Um, that's um, basically very detailed information of what courses you should enroll in in each semester. You can refer to those information and enroll in courses. Um, but if you're confused or have, or have any questions about um, what courses to enroll, um, you can contact us um, and then we can um, answer your questions. Awesome. Okay, Eloise has uh, just wants to confirm the prerequisites for courses will all be available to view on the course planners. Uh, I assume the the, stu the study planners, they would take into consideration the prerequisites. Yes, so um, on the study planners, um, when it was planned out, um, definitely the prerequisites are taken into account. But then if you would like to check the actual prerequisite for each course, um, you can go to the ECP. Awesome. Okay, so the next person I, I think uh, maybe we won't answer because you've got a very <laughs> specific question to you. Um, I would maybe, say, um, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe go to um, the 
study planner. Sorry, I know we have mentioned this a lot of times, mm -hmm. but on the science study planner, um, definitely all the master's um, study planners have been published. Um, you can refer to the study plan there. It will be very specific on um, when you should take like the core courses, the electives, for example. Yeah, so um, just to let everyone know the website of the um, science study planner. So it's planner.science.uq.edu.au. Maybe I'll type in the chat so everyone can have access. Excellent. Okay, so the next one uh, has got some questions about software licenses. So you will have access to Microsoft C365. Uh, and if you look on your dashboard, you can see that you've got a link there to those uh, programs. Uh, UQ does have a number of other programs available. You can just Google uh, UQ software uh, that are free. So there is a list on our website that you can uh, down to look at it and it'll give you information about how to download those kinds of things. Okay. Okay, so the difference between required prerequisite and recommended prerequisite. So required prerequisite is you have to do it before enrolling in that course. Okay, uh, recommended prerequisite, it, I, my understanding it would mean it is, it would be better for you and you would do better at the course if you have already done this one. It doesn't mean you necessarily have to do it, but it will be better for you and it'll be better for your academic journey if you do them in that order. Okay. Um, uh, this is back to delayed viewing again, Phoebe. Sorry, I don't remember your exact answer. So it says delayed viewing, which means I don't have to attend the classroom. This is very confusing. <laughs> yes. Um, so in some of the, um, for some of the lectures, um, you probably can see a delayed viewing. It is basically just a recording of the lecture that is de delivered live, but um, you are highly recommended to attend the lecture instead of doing delayed viewing. Generally, students perform better academically if they attend um, the lectures and tutorials. Okay. All right. Our colleague Barb is, is again <laughs> here with, our, with the answer. Uh, so there will be two sessions on how to use a study planner. Uh, one the 4th and one the 13th of July. Please keep an eye on the orientation website. Links to register for these sessions will be put up there soon. I think maybe next semester if we do this again, Barb should jump on with us. Yes, that would be awesome. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. So the next person, if I plan to declare a minor, when and how do I do so? Um, so if your program allowed you to complete a minor, you can um, nominate it on Synet. Um, so basically you can do it now if you want to, or like throughout your study, just I would say um, do it probably at least one semester before you're um, due to graduate, just so um, like we know that you plan to complete a minor. <laughs> yeah, please let us know. <laughs> okay, so. We've got Eloise again. Uh, and if no one has any more pressing questions, we might make this the last one. Okay, so will we receive any information about OWIC closer to the time example where we need to go? So there, you should already be able to see some of the OWIC events there. If you uh, look up UQ Orientation Week Planner, there's a planner. Uh, please keep an eye on our social media as well. Uh, and it's also probably worth keeping an eye on the UQU, so the University of Queensland Unions are uh, social media as well because they'll be putting up what events there are on those kinds of things so the union will might have some parties and things you might like to go to uh there will be i know that i will do our team will do uh presentations on things like uh safety in australia so if you're an international student i recommend uh watching i think we, they're going to be uh online this time so there'll be things like uh, welcome to uq and getting started uh, there will be things about accommodation and a range of things. I know that there will be faculty specific things. Uh, so find that uh, orientation planner website uh, and check back uh, 
probably regularly and probably just before O week uh, to plan out what you want to do. Uh, new uh, events and presentations and things will still be being added because obviously people are still kind of figuring out what they're doing. Uh, but it's always fun O week. There's always uh, things to do. There's always food trucks. There's uh, at the I, this is what our is around in our area. There is things like uh, thirty second massages. There's uh, puppy petting. Uh, there's art. Uh, there's a whole range of things. There's music. Uh, there's uh, well, there's an international student welcome breakfast. So if you're an international student, highly recommend going to that. Uh, I will possibly be there. Possibly not. I don't, don't know yet. Uh, but you great chance to meet people. Okay. So just one thing that I might clarify before I go. Uh, We've talked about a number of different advisors here. So we've talked about academic advisors who uh, are in faculty and can help you with those kinds of things. I am a student advisor, okay? I talk to students about disability, welfare, settling in a range of things around that area, okay? Uh, if you have any concerns around those areas, please uh, just Google UQ student advisor and book in and, and talk to one of us. Uh, however, we cannot provide course or program advice, as we've just all found out here in this presentation. I don't know that much about it. Uh, so that's that's the difference between a student advisor and an academic advisor. Now, to confuse you even more, we've also got what we call learning advisors. So they are also in my department. So they can help you with things like uh, clarifying what is expected for you to do in the assessment pieces. Uh, if you get feedback from a course coordinator, helping you incorporate that back into your work. Uh, a range of things they can help you plan out your semester. So that's a learning advisor, okay? So a student advisor is for disability and welfare and settling in. A learning advisor is for helping improve those skills that you uh, might need help on. And an academic advisor is course and program questions, okay? I always like to uh, sort that one out. Okay, well, what we might do is, thank you so much all everyone for coming. It's been uh, really great talking to all of you. Thank you so much, Phoebe, for all the great information that you have provided us. Um, and just welcome to UQ. Uh, please come and get involved. If you are confused about something, please reach out. If you need help, please let us know. Uh, there's plenty of supports here when we don't want you to uh, be floundering. Uh, so I will just end this by saying thank you for attending and welcome to UQ. Thank you, everyone.